All right. Getting some much needed hammock time here. A little humid out today, but other than that, it's nice. Working up a bit of a sweat here, just uh, hanging out. I actually took a little walk around, but anyways, finished my uh, previous video on the uh, setting up the operating system on the server. So after this little break, I'll start working on the next. I'll be setting up the video on getting cockpit to work on the server so you have the remote GUI. Done some other posts about it, uh, they're up on my website. But this will be the first video I've actually done upon, about it and it's actually kind of a neat GUI so hope you'll uh, watch it. First thing we really need to do in this next section here is install cockpit. So first let's check and make sure what's installed and what's not. And we'll again use apt list installed and we'll grep for cockpit and nothing's installed. Since we're using our open SSH interface, we're logged in as a regular user. So we need to use sudo to install cockpit. And of course, APT is going to pull in all the dependencies. It's going to take a little bit of time to get everything installed. Again, depends on the speed of your internet connection. And if everything went according to plan, we finished up without any errors. So now we can pull up the man page for cockpit and we can uh, take a look at it and some of the information about it. Next we can fire up our browser and then we want to point to our IP address and we want to use port 9090 which is the port cockpit works on. At this point we don't have any firewall set up on our server that may come later in which case we'll have to punch a hole but again that's later. Right now the server is strictly on our local LAN and we don't really have to worry too much at this point about a firewall. So once we point our browser to the server on port 9090, we will get a security warning because cockpit as installed uses a self-signed certificate. We want to go to the advanced option. We want to say accept the risk because this is our site and we trust that we didn't do anything and our browser should remember this and we should be brought to the cockpit GUI and the login will be a normal user we've already created on our server. Any normal user so you could have multiple normal users and they could each log into their own instance of cockpit. Up to you whether you want to save it in your browser or not. Firefox offers you the option. This will bring us to the overview page of the cockpit interface where we can see some basic statistics. There's also some a note at the top of the page you can go ahead and hit the X button to close that note it's if you'll notice it's the same one you see when you log into the uh, server via OpenSSH so after clearing it we've got health usage system information and configuration from left to right and we've got our menu on the left hand side going down the left hand side of the screen Next, let's go to the terminal and let's list what's installed for cockpit and what's not. You'll notice in this case we left off the installed option and this basically goes through our entire database that we downloaded when we <clears throat> first logged into the package manager and you can see all the cockpit options we have and some of them are marked installed, some of them are not marked installed we're going to install a couple of these now. We're going to install a couple of additional helper programs as well. I'm not sure if I need them or not, but we'll see. First one I'm going to install is LS, LM sensors as it doesn't appear to be installed already. Uh, we'll have to play with this program a little later, but it basically lets you read some of your hardware sensors and then you can look at them in the uh, 
at least in the uh, terminal, there is, I believe, a extra package for cockpit that allows you to monitor your computer. We'll have to look into that. Now we're going to call, install another cockpit program. This one's Cockpit PCP, which will allow us to record our historical data. But we're also going to need another program, and this is one that got me initially on Cockpit, XZ-Utils. We need this program for the recording. It's the uh, compression that is used by the cockpit PCP module. It's not listed as being required, suggested, or anything, but I think it should be. I may have to file a bug report saying that this needs to be listed with this particular module because it is required to do the historical stuff. Then I want to install Podman. This is a Docker-type program that works with the Open Container Standard. It's very similar, although not an exact match for Docker. It runs entirely in user space also. May or may not be using pods at this point. We'll see as we get further along. Now if we go back and refresh our interface, you can see we've got a few more menu items. For example, the Podman containers menu item is there now. Going, playing around with the interface, I still notice a few things missing, specifically LVM. Again, probably not going to be using LVM. But it's not showing up here. I know I installed it. A uh, little research showed me, well, actually trying to do it in cockpit, a little research showed me I needed the UDISCs 2-LVM2 package to be installed also. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. If I can type my password correctly. And now we have both RAID and LVM2 available from our storage screen. I will be using RAID, but again, I wanted to show this to you because some people want to use LVM. Now we're going to go through a little process for installing. If you go to the main cockpit website, you'll see there's some third party applications. A lot of them are in a common repository, and we're going to want to add this repository so we have access to those applications. So the first thing I need to do is install curl because that's what's required to download and run the installation file that will actually add the repository. So curl is currently not installed. So we go ahead and install it. Now, if you go to the actual website, you will see it'll give you a command using curl to install. Uh, you can see it here, curl dash, small s, large s, large l, and then the IP address, and then sudo bash. And we do this and It doesn't work. If we go down and look through our results, we can find we had an error. It is looking for a wget command on line 146. We can see that because it tells us that right in the errors. So I check it did not create the source directory it should have created. So I need to install wget. So we, again, we use apt install for that. And 
and we try and run the command again. And again, it fails. Let's take a look. Bash line 164, LSB release. Ah, another package we need to get installed. It's not present. Now we run the command again. We get no errors reported. All right. Now that that command has run successfully, we've added this repository to or existing repositories that we're already using. So we run a sudo apt update. And we should see the repo 45 drivers.com repository being updated. If we look at the etc apt sources.list.d, we'll see that the file for this repository has been created now. So good to go with the repository. Now if we do a cockpit, if we do the uh, apt list for cockpit again with grep, then you will see we have far more packages available to us now. So we're going to install a few of these file sharing. Uh, there's one called Samba Manager, but that's an obsolete package. File sharing replaces it. First one we're going to install is Samba. This is not a cockpit package, but this is what will allow us to set up shared network connections that a Windows machine will actually recognize. We also need to install a Samba client. I actually typed the wrong thing here. It should be SMB client. Note that APT picked up on my error and corrected it for me and asked if I wanted to continue. Way to go, APT. It's a very good program if it is command line based and you should really learn to use it. And the last thing we need for the Samba install is the CIFS utilities. So I'll go ahead and install those. Now we will go ahead and install the cockpit file sharing application.
After that, we want to install the cockpit identities. This actually, this application will let us do user management without the command line. It'll give us a graphic user, give us a GUI to do user management through the cockpit interface. Kind of cool. And Navigator is actually a web browser. Again, it works through the cock, it's GUI and it works through the cockpit interface and it will allow us to browse files on our server. Need to refresh our web page, and you can see we've got navigator, file sharing, and identities now added to our list of options on the left hand side. Now to use the Samba through the file sharing application, we need to modify, and it will tell us this, that we need to modify the uh, Samba config file. You'll see up here in the right-hand corner. So we'll go ahead and go into the terminal, and we will do that. And there's the application, it, or the uh, modification that it wants to make. And we open it as read only. So we'll have to go back and do it as sudo. Now we can go ahead and restart everything. And re-log back into cockpit. And we can go through our options and interface stuff now. All right. I think I've reached the end of this video. I'm about where I am at the server build stage right now. I would, didn't want to really move on with anything on the server to like caught up in these videos. So that's where we are right now and uh now we get to do the fun stuff again instead of making videos i'll start playing with the server some more and this one's been a little haphazard in fact the little last couple of videos have been a little haphazard but sort of the way it goes right now living in someone else's house don't really have my office but hopefully that changes when i head back to the philippines anyway thanks for watching <clears throat>